Okay, we set up our curator CE or free curator CE with the wonderful package that Mutas created for Sysmon for detecting sophisticated attacks, as we shown in the video. Notice that this is not digitally signed by IBM. And uh, let's move into the other two machines that we set up by previous video. This is the Kali installation. And let's actually go there. And we're going to do sudo su to become super user. Put the password. And we're going to invoke the Metapreter environment. We tap there, console, and then the resource file is under root. And this is the, the one I provided. You can rename it, change it, and modify it. And this assumes, as I explained in the installation of the Kali video, that the IP address of the Kali machine is this one, 124. If it's a different one, you need to do two things. Uh, watch the video on MSS Venom to create the malicious file, the one that we call mylove.exe, with that callback address, and modify the resource file accordingly here. So this is ready, and uh, we are in the, this is a Windows evaluation, Win 7 evaluation machine. Notice that that's the, the password of the machine. I'm going to actually get rid of this blue thing. I prefer to have a all white. And there are two ways that we can set this infection. One is by double clicking here. I'm going to actually do that. But before I do it, let me show you what's in it. And in, in my notes in the directory on my public box folder called my notes, you find this file. Uh, this uh, word this uh, Word document has one single line of a PowerShell execution, which, as you see, goes to the Kali machine, then loads the mylove.exe, and executes it uh, from the temporary directory. But in order to obfuscate the attack and make QReader blind from it, we'll see if that happens, actually. We executed the command by doing encode base 64 That's one of the basic encoding. More of them will be shown later. So that's one way of doing it. And there is a separate video that shows how you set up the Word document for doing all this and show you the macro and all that good stuff. All that is provided. So if we were actually clicking, double clicking in here, we should see, let me actually make this a little shorter. We, we see that a session gets actually established, right? So that's one way of making the attack. Let me make this narrower. Uh, you can kill the session by doing the command sessions tab and then dash capital K for killing and then that closes that uh, that session. Now we can go back here and close that document. The other way you can get infected is and again I'm not going to make this video on, on the vectors there are way too many. Uh, is by going into the HTTP server, the Apache server that is on the target machine by virtue of a bat click, a bat link. If we go there, HTTP colon slash slash 172.16.60.124 and the link will point to download the mylove.exe file that is there. And you remember that from the installation of the Kali system. And I is HTTP. When we do that, we are presented say, do you want to download this? And again, this can be an update of Adobe Acrobat or whatever you think it is. So they say yes, save file, right? So that file is in my uh, in in my desktop, and if we execute that file. Again, different techniques for invoking. Notice that you have this type of warning in here, right? Uh, if you were to run that, you actually get a session open. And it's called, actually, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, I need to click here. So if we do the command sessions, your sessions alone, it will give you the inventory of the session. We kill the first one, and we have only session two open. 
So what can I do with such a session? Well, let me actually ask for a shell. And when I ask for a shell, oh, actually, I need to go into that session with for Metaprater. So I do sessions, interactive-i, and session 2, which is the only one that we have right now. So we are in that session. If we invoke a shell now, we are in the Windows machine. You see? That is this this is the desktop and I have my love.exe, subpoena, etc. So as an attacker, what are the things that I can do? They are very limited because if we do who am I? I'm just the IA user for so I don't I don't have admin privileges or system privileges or anything like that. From the mentality of an attacker, think like an attacker. I, I got an, a session with this machine where I cannot do much, but the most important thing I need to do is make sure that the, if the guy shuts down the machine, I don't lose the session. So I, I need to achieve persistency. I need to make sure that this machine will be mine for forever. So in order to do that, the first thing I need to do is I need to escalate privileges. I need to get better than basic user admin or system or anything like that. The problem with that is that th there's something in Windows called, if I try to run anything as an admin, there's something in Windows called the user access control. And that will prevent me from escalating privilege. I'm here in the Ukraine, so unless somebody's here in New York and click here, yes, this thing is not going to escalate privilege. Or so we think. So let me actually show you the first thing that the attacker will do, which is escalate privileges. And there are multiple ways of doing that. I'm going to show you one approach. So I need to exit this shell. I want to keep this session, so I send it to the background. Let's see, BC, and then type tap, go to the background. So I, I retain that session. But I need to use an exploit that will enable me to bypass the user access control. So I, 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 I do use exploit from the Windows family for local machines, and there are multiple exploit in Metapreter here and uh, it's called Bypass UAC. As simple as that. And once I've done that, I set the first session as the trampoline for this. So I do set sessions and then session 2, which is the only one I have. And now if I do exploit, I should get a session number 3 that has the capability of escalating privileges. Okay. Now I'm there. And to prove that I can escalate privilege, I, if I issue the command get system, I should be able to get system privilege and I achieve success in the first attempt. So if I go into a shell now, let's see what's different. If I do who am I and system, I'm Superman. I can do with this thing whatever I want. So for example, in order to achieve persistence, I need to put that my love.exe into the root of the C directory and you'll see why uh, in a second. So what I need to do is um, move into the user. So I do CD uh, users, right? IE user. Let's see if I got this IE. Yeah, uh, this is not case sensitive. So let's see if I achieve that. So I'm there. Let me go into the desktop. I don't get the option to do tab here. So I'm in the desktop. And if I do a dir, I, I see those two files. So I want to move that uh, or copy or whatever. I'm going to copy that file, my love.exe, into the uh, probably as an attacker I will want to move it rather than copy it so it will not be visible but that's that's uh, you get the point so now I have that file here uh, and in order for me to achieve persistency now that I'm super user I need to issue a couple of commands so let me show you some ways of achieving persistence this is one of the files that you have available so I'm going to issue these all these commands all at once right uh, let me copy that into the clipboard. But let me explain the commands. The first one is actually saying, well, every time the machine reboots by modifying the, the Windows registry, 
make sure that you run the mylove.exe that we just moved into the C directory as calc. So when you look into the task manager, it will look like a calculator. And, um, and these other commands, this allows me to, on the, the on-screen keyboard, if I get remote desktop access to the machine, I get a command window without any password with full system rights. And the last three, activate the guest account, make it a member of the AD groups, and give it a password. Again, some of these attacks may, you may have protections against these things or not, that's not the point. I'm, I'm gonna say that the attacker succeeded in doing this, I'm gonna detect when they do. If you have protection against this, fantastic. But what you wanna make sure is that when if anyone is able to bypass any one of those protections and gets to the Windows system, that you wanna make sure that that gets detected in spite of the obfuscation that they might be available. So, let's actually, uh, we copy those commands. Let me actually paste those in here and see if I can execute them. And you see all of them executed successfully. So I have achieved persistence. At the end of the video, I'm gonna reboot this machine after killing all the session. And you'll see that every time the machine reboots, the machine will be mine because that program in the C directory is gonna be executed. There's gonna be a warning. That, that, again, you, you don't get hung up on all those things, but uh, let's say that I bypass all those mechanisms. Now, I have a cheap persistency which is my goal, I can relax now as an attack. I don't know whether I wanna look for stuff here, I can come back later, little by little, but I know that the, every time this machine reboots, the machine will be mine. Let's actually, this video is getting way too long, let's actually test that out. Let me exit from here. Let me exit from here, I'm actually killing the session. If I do an exit, if I do sessions, I don't have any session. Well, I do have the, oh, I forgot about the session number two. That's the one that started uh, when I opened the file the first time. So if I do sessions and I do capital K, dash capital K kills all the session. So if I do sessions right now, I don't have any, no active session. If we reboot this machine, the machine will be mine. Back. Let's restart that, and we see that the, when the machine reboots, we're gonna be getting another session started. But how much of this, even though we did obfuscation, even though we were, how much of this has curator by virtue of the sysmon that we install and sending those logs with WinCollect to curator, how much of that was curator able to see? Well, if we go in here, well, notice that you get that warning. And again, um, if the user is uh, full into clicking here, run, bang, you get that session start. So that proves the persistency of this attack. Now, let's actually go to Curator and see how much of this Curator was able to see. And and by the way, we can even do more harm. Uh, I can bypass the UAC and I can clear all the logs and there are many things that I will be showing in other attacks. Let's keep this video um, a little short. If I refresh the screen, I got two offenses. That's actually pretty good. Let's take a look at this offense. Detected PowerShell. Da, da, da. What is this? Well, the best way of knowing how much of this was Curator able to see is by displaying the rules. And I hope that you are impressed with all the rules that Mutas put in that Sysmon packet. These are the those rules firing. You know, so detected the PowerShell that, that was long command. That was because of the obfuscation when we did the first time in memory attack. You can read for yourself. There is a plenty of goodness uh, being done in here, right? Notice that it detected that I did persistency by drawing something on the registry for that. So all those things were were actually detected. Notice that the guest account has been added to a privileged group. And as you saw in previous videos, there are almost 300 of these beautiful Sysmon rules. Uh, so this is one offense. And if we look into any one of these uh, rules, 
I want to show you something else. Uh, you see that these rules, this one is indexed by the log source. Now, why you, you may say, why, why do I have two rules if there was only one machine involved here, which is the same, the 229? Well, if we go into this one and we display the rule, we'll see that there are some actions that, that, that have been detected, right? But if we look at any one of these rules, we see that these particular two rules are indexed by source IP, and that's why they are shown as uh, part of two offenses, not one. So this is the first attack. Many good and more sophisticated attacks will be coming. We're going to be also doing stuff on Windows 10. Uh, but again, focus on how you detect when these things happen by virtue of those beautiful Sysmon rules. And you begin to think like an attacker and detect, regardless of the vector, the, regardless of what the guy bypassed, uh, I mean, here the, 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 in, this, in this machine, the, the firewalls are, are up. But let's say that uh, the, the bad guy finds what op ports are open on the firewall and use that port for the attack. So again, these, these videos are not going to focus on the vectors and the mechanism, but once all those things are bypassed and the user gets to the core of, of Windows, how you detect those with this wonderful Sysmon package.